With the official start of summer just a few days away, scientists say a mega drought across the western U.S. could get even worse. Millions of people in the state are now under new intense water restrictions. All right, millions of Southern Californians are now under new water restrictions amid the state's severe drought. My name is Riggs Eckleberry, and I am the co-founder of Origin Clear, which um, is a company that is working hard to create innovative, disruptive ventures in the water industry. We're essentially an innovation hub. So we have conventional water companies that we've created in the industrial space. We also have um, new financial vehicles to create water as a service, which is a whole new area. And um, we also have a division that does nothing but modular water systems to get away from the, you know, custom water uh, equipment. You know, the water industry is in a way very, very um, backward. Um, and so we have some technology that creates these water systems in a box, which is very exciting. Hi. My name is Michael. Thank you for joining. Is problem in America only or it's worldwide clean water? There are several different levels. Worldwide, counting everybody, only about 20% of all sewage is treated. Now, that's not true of OECD countries, uh, which do a good job of treating most of their water. But then you have places, you know, in the undeveloped world or developing world, like Bangladesh, where there's virtually no water treatment. And even a place that's a second world country like Mexico has very, um, you know, there's, there's rivers in Mexico that look like a rainbow because there's a lot of dumping still going on. So I would say there's a big difference between the developed countries like America, European countries, Australia, and, um, and uh, the developing countries. But even America... Uh, does not reach as high a standard as, for example, Italy. I remember having vacationed um, in Italy several times uh, uh, around a lake that was surrounded, was, I guess an old volcano, it was surrounded by fields that went down into the lake, and yet the lake was pure, pristine, completely uh, drinkable water even, despite the, but in America, the fertilizer would have been going into that lake and creating all kinds of algae. So... I would say that the best practices are in the European community. Um, America does okay, but then there's the factor of the recycling. Um, and in that area, the, probably the world leader is re Israel, where almost 90% of all water is recycled. The second in the world is Spain with 20%. America is only 1%. And the reason for that is that we have an old um, sewage grid that only works one way, just like the energy grid. Um, you send your water to the city, the city processes it, and then sends it into the ocean or a river or whatever. Treated, there's nothing wrong with the water, but the opportunity to recycle has been lost. And we're seeing that as an issue in places like California, where they're still struggling with outdated sewage systems. Um, and they're struggling, for example, in San Diego, they're trying to do this thing called toilet to tap. Um, but because the central systems aren't built that way, it's involving billions of dollars. Um, so there's some new approaches needed in places like California um, because the there's a there's an infrastructure problem essentially. So you think California problems can be solved with a little bit uh, of money, a little bit of ingenuity, but it's not uh, something that cannot be solved with water recycling. Water recycling helps tremendously. Now here's here is the the gorilla in the middle of the room in, in California. And that is that agriculture represents about 80% of all use. So, um, yes, we're, we're happy that citizens are taking shorter showers, et cetera. But the effect, the net effect is, is negligible overall. Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good PR campaign. But the fact is that um, increasingly there has been a pivot toward high value crops such as nuts and so forth, which are high water users now. Granted, there's also been a lot of um, headway. Uh, you know, there's been basically more um, movement towards high value crops, which tend to use more water, but also more water efficiency. But that's kind of dancing around the problem, which is it's a desert. And um, the high agricultural use in California 
Um, unfortunately, you know, it's something like, what is it? You know, the $70 billion a year. It's a ridiculous amount of, of money that is, um, uh, here we go. No, I apologize. Um, $20 billion a year in, uh, exports for agricultural products. And, um, they have to irrigate. Um, and you know, there's vast amounts of water. Um, you know, 34 million acre feet of water per year are irrigated. Well, an acre foot can um, easily take care of four households. So that um, right there is, you know, um, those 34 million means um, about 120 million people could be served with the same amount of water that is being used for irrigation. Um, that that's the nature of the beast because, um, you know, 80% of all water used in California, uh, is agricultural. So, um, at some point, I think California is going to have to, um, confront that issue and deal with it in a, in a create as much a creative way as possible. Um, it's, I'm, I'm reading the public policy Institute of California website here and, um, the uh, higher revenue crops, such as nuts and grapes, which again use a lot of water, um, have increased as a share of irrigated acreage from 16% in 1980 to 33% in 2015, and up to 45% in the Southern Central Valley. So lots more use of water, um, which generated more revenue, but actually farm water use was 14% lower. So it's good that they are doing, they're working very hard to become more efficient, but there's limits. Um, if you're going to use high water usage, um, you know, when I take a bunch of grapes, most of those, that bunch of grapes is water and that gets taken. It can't be reused. It gets taken to a grocery store and, uh, in uh, New York City or whatever, and and uh, consume there, so that water leaves California and it can never be reclaimed. So I think at some point we're going to have to confront the nature of the uh, ag agriculture use in California. I got you. So from your point of view, it's uh, agricultural need for water actually what's taking most of the Californian water out. Regular consumers most likely are not going to suffer really badly meaning yeah they have uh what is it called uh, sporadic turn offs and turn ons of water in their households but it's not like they're gonna end up in the complete desert without any water around them most likely californians will just spend less water on the agriculture that's your point of view i actually think that um, residential users are going to suffer because the government has already shown that they were they're, they're going to start doing rationing um they they they're encouraging a lot. And by the way, the populations in California have been very, very supportive. Um, per capita water use has declined from 231 gallons per day in 1990 to 180, gall 180 gallons per day in 2010, and it continues to fall. So um, in fact, 2015, it was 146 gallons per day. So they're doing a fine job, um, mostly by reducing landscape watering. Um, but there's going to be requirements for long-term reductions. If you are a big water user for landscape, I can tell you that because I've been a, a, a water user in California, your water bill goes crazy. Um, so yeah, plant desert plants, of course. Um, but what I'm saying is all that stuff is going to be, you know, it's going to be hard for residential users and there's going to be sacrifice but doesn't it doesn't accomplish that much in numerical terms the the real gains are in the agricultural area and unfortunately 20 billion dollars a year is a big vote <laughs> it's very hard to get rid of that revenue for california so um they're in a tough place it's really really hard for them to get to get rid of their their you know uh, get rid of avocados instead and instead plant barley it's going to be very hard i would like to move to the next subject you've mentioned that uh, water recycling equipment could be purchased and installed in a single household 
Can you talk a little bit about it? What is it? Uh, do you work with such equipment or can you just advise our consumers a little bit about what are recycling for a single home? The best, uh, what we deal with is, of course, we work at the uh, housing development use uh, level because um, let me just say something about, you know, single family. It's a very competitive um, market. Um, there are systems for water recycling Uh, for example, Fuji Water has an excellent system for making taking you off the grid and you don't need a sewage uh, connection if you have a single family home. And they do a fine job. It's, I don't know, ten, twelve thousand dollars. It's we don't we don't try and compete with that because they do a fine job already. Um, and as you know, a whole home uh, water purification is also very mature. What we like to do is intervene at the housing development level to work with the developers and so that they have an opportunity to locate the entire development away from conventional water sources. And where Origin Clear comes in is we have a program that enables them to not pay up front for the, the equipment, but rather pay by the gallon as if they were still getting it from the city. So we call that water on demand. It's a basically it creates a water as a service. We have investors who Who purchase the equipment and then these housing developments can just enjoy the, the three parts, as I said, the incoming clean water, the water, the, the treatment of the black water, and the recycling of what we call the gray water, um, all on a completely self-sufficient basis. And I think that's the future um, because more and more residential requirements are outstripping the availability of sewage. Let's take, for example, Miami-Dade County, which built about, uh, you know, it expanded very fast without any kind of urban planning back almost 100 years ago. And what was installed was uh, over 100,000 septic tanks were installed throughout the county, very widely spread. And so the county has come up with a proposal because septic tanks are terrible. As the water um, levels rise, due to um, saltwater intrusion, et cetera, um, it's become a problem. So they want to replace all those um, septic tanks with um, hard sewage. Well, that's $6 billion dollars in today's money, probably be about eight or 10 by the time it's built, 20 years of disruption, et cetera, et cetera. The better solution is to simply run a rebate program and let people install their own self-sufficient water treatment. So these, the, the you know, do-it-yourself water treatment I believe is the solution to a lot of problems in America and it enables a lot more utilization of the water, be it residential, industrial, or agricultural. With your plan price per gallon of water, how does it impact consumers' wallet? Is it less expensive? Is it more expensive? What is the pricing structure there? Uh, price has been skyrocketing for water. Water rates are not very regulated. You would think they would be, but they're not. And so um, the the water rates over a 10-year period that I'm looking at here uh, uh, tripled um, versus ordinary core inflation. So water rates were already taking off even before the current inflationary phase. So um, And uh, in some places, they're as high as 14% of the uh, residential uh, budget, which is ridiculous. Um, so that's another reason for people to become self-sufficient. Um, you know, we, I never thought I'd say it, but you know, the preppers were right. We, you need to have a plan for taking care of yourself in this current environment. And that includes water. So what's uh, your current price per water in some of your installations? How does it match up to the town's water in comparable locations? Is it Similar? Is it 20% higher? Is it 20% lower? How does it compare? Well, okay, there's two things. First of all, by adopting our water as a service program, we enable, and, and we're really talking about businesses or communities, right? So we're not talking about single family homes, but if it is residential, it will be a community of homes or it's a business. And um, those, by committing to a long-term contract for water service, they can limit their increases. So it's a way to cap the uh, inflation increases um, by going into our programs. That's number one. Uh, number two, by doing their own treatment, they're able to reuse their water the way they normally cannot. 
And that, and I'll give you an example, in a brewery, you can reuse about 50% of the water without using the water for beer, just for washdowns and steam vessels and so forth. And so if you can get a 50% increase in water use for every dollar you spend, that's a big, that's a win. So I would say a combination of service contracts that cap the increases to some reasonable uh, inflation index and um, also reuse of water to get more turns out of the water. Does your system produce drinkable water as an end product? Is it the drinkable water? Exactly. Um, Currently, we're about to inaugurate. Hotels are beginning to install uh, whole hotel water systems. And we have such a um, a, a hotel, high-end hotel chain. Unfortunately, we can't disclose yet. They're launching um, in July um, with our system. And what they've chosen to do is all the water coming into the hotel is pure, whether it's for kitchen, showers, anything. Um, and that, I think, is going to become a trend. Um, and so we have a well-priced system that, um, you know, is certainly very uh, affordable for a business or a community that does uh, the full of reverse osmosis, which is what you need to get rid of those for, what's called the forever chemicals, uh, the PFAS, as they call it, the things that are in Teflon and so forth. There's really only one way to get rid of those, and that's with uh, reverse osmosis. And that's what you have to use to clean the incoming water. In my home, for example, I don't have reverse osmosis for the entire home. I have just a plain uh, 0.2 micron filter. But in my kitchen sink, I have a tap that is RO water, and that's what we drink from. And that's that's really what you have to do. Another question I have, so the hotel installs your system. Do they install a duplicate system right next to it? Uh, what happens if your system breaks? A wa- this hotel, which I, I can tell you is located in, it's, it will be located in Nashville, Tennessee. You can always switch. The city water will not kill people immediately. <laughs> so it's not like they're going from pure water to no water. They're going from pure water for the brief amount of time that might be down, they'll have to they'll be tap water. But um, remember that these systems on service contract, they're easy to swap out. We have local service uh, providers who come in, they swap out the filters, whatever is broken down about it. These are very simple systems. Uh, it's just like a refrigerator breaking down. Generally, you have enough time before the fridge starts to warm up that you can fix it. Similarly, with incoming water, uh, as I say, um, nobody lo- nobody loves... It, you know, it's strange, Michael. Once upon a time, we all drank pure, drank tap water, and it was okay. That's now become a no-no. But you know, if it's two, three hours, five hours on tap water, it's not the end of the world. My experience with uh, water filtration is lots and lots of maintenance because filters get clogged up and they mm-hmm. need to be cleaned. So that's my question. How do you address regular maintenance? How does it occur? This is a complex system and it needs to be addressed properly. People can invest in redundant systems. They typically don't. That's the truth of it. Um, because again, you're not going from pure water to no water. You're going from uh, pure water to treated water, which um, many, many people would say is old fashioned people would say it's just fine. Um, so I, I, we haven't run into people who are willing to invest in redundant systems, let's put it that way. Quality-wise, do you have any data comparing your water to uh, bottled water being sold in the stores? Bottled water is typically um, purified using reverse osmosis. Um, there is an issue with uh, bottled water uh, being in plastic, and there's some data that that the plastic can contaminate the water, especially if you let the bottle get hot, you know, or you let it get warm. Um, so, but there's not a huge difference in quality. The, the, I would say that if you have a standard bottled water that comes out of 7-Eleven, um, it will be reverse osmosis treated. It'll be pure. And it'll be very similar to the water you can get from one of our water systems. The difference, of course, is that, you know, we're not using a ton of plastic bottles. I mean, that's the big difference.
guys watching this uh, video please sign up for best consumer channel it means a lot like this video and Riggs thank you very much thank you for joining us today mm -hmm.